You Wouldn't Want to Live Without Insects, written by Anne Rooney, illustrated by David Antrim. Readers, today we are going to read just a few pages taken from this book. If you'd like to read the other pages that we did not read, you can check this out from your library. Introduction You might think it would be rather nice to live in a world without insects. There would be no wasps to sting you, no mosquitoes to bite you, no ants to crawl over your picnic, and no annoying head lice to make your head itch. Your dog wouldn't get fleas, and your plants wouldn't be eaten by aphids. It all sounds nice and peaceful, doesn't it? Insects can be real pests, and we often go to a lot of trouble to kill them. But not all insects are pests, and many of them are a lot more helpful to us than you might think. Even insects you might not like. Without insects, we would have a lot less to eat. The world would get really messy, too. They might be small, but some insects do big, important jobs. So don't use this book to swat a fly. Read on and find out just how useful insects can be, and then decide. Would you really want to live in a world without insects? You little pest. Insects have been on Earth a lot longer than we have. They got here first, so give them a bit of a break. Destruction is good. Although it's a nuisance if insects eat your sweater, your house, or your crops, the destructive behavior of insects is vital to keep the world going. Who do you think gets rid of all the plants and animals that die? Who clears up all the dung that animals drop? Insects are the great recyclers. They break up dead things and dung, and they eat this refuse, lay eggs in it, or drag it underground where bacteria get to work on it. Without the insect scavengers, the world would disappear under a mountain of waste of the nastiest kind. Dead animal and plants make a meal for lots of insects. Many types of flies and beetles lay eggs in dead flesh. When the maggots hatch, they munch away on the meat, tidying up. A kangaroo dung. Kangaroo dung is neat and dry. Cow dung is sloppy and messy. When people first took cows to Australia, the dung beetles couldn't cope with cow dung. The mess built up at a rate of 12 million cow pies an hour. Special dung beetles were imported from Africa to clean up. Bugs make the world go round. Insects buzzing around your summer picnic might be annoying, but you wouldn't want to have the picnic at all if there were no insects. Three quarters of the world's plants and a third of all crops are pollinated by animals. And most of those useful animals are insects. Without them, we wouldn't have any fruit or flowers and we'd have far fewer vegetables. Even if you don't like eating vegetables, other animals do. And you might want to eat those animals or drink their milk. A bee that has found flowers tells other bees where to find them by doing a waggle dance. The dance shows the direction as an angle with the sun, as well as showing the distance to the flowers. Path of dancing bee, flowers, sun, angle, hive. Bad guys turn good. Some insects are pests at one stage in their lives, but useful to humans in another stage. They might eat crops as larvae, but pollinate crops as adults. Or they might remove waste as larvae, but become pesky pests as adults. There are lots of ways of being useful. Insects are useful food for people in some parts of the world. And many are useful food for other animals. Many fish, reptiles, mammals, and birds eat insects, their larvae, or their eggs. And some of those animals are, use are themselves useful food sources for humans. But the very same insects that are useful food sources can also be a nuisance, eating our crops, carrying diseases, or undermining buildings and other structures. Good guys can be bad, and bad guys can be good. The cabbage white butterfly lays eggs on the underside of the leaf of a cabbage or broccoli plant. When the caterpillars hatch, they chomp away at the cabbage. That's pretty annoying if you're a cabbage farmer. By the time the caterpillar is ready to pupate, it's usually done a lot of damage to the cabbage. Eat and be eaten. 
Even insects that we don't think are useful to us are important in the food chain. Ecosystems are carefully balanced, and insects are both consumers and food, eaters and eaten. Some insects eat others that are pests to humans. They help to control bugs that gobble up our crops or cause other types of harm. A ladybug will eat 50 aphids a day, and a ladybug larva eats its own weight in aphids each day. Farmers can even buy in insects to help control crop pests instead of using chemical pesticides. Many animals that we like to encourage eat insects. Frogs and birds eat insects and also eat other garden pests such as snails. Frogs eat lots of different types of insects. The frog's sticky tongue flicks out at lightning speed to pick up a passing fly or beetle. A frog will eat thousands over the course of its life. A lacewing larva eats aphids, caterpillars, mites, insect eggs, and all kinds of pests. In Australia, farmers introduce them to rapeseed crops, plants used to make animal feed and vegetable oil, specifically to eat pests. Good, bad, and ugly bugs. If we didn't try to limit populations of some insects, the world would be racked by famine, disease, and destruction. But if we wiped them out completely, then the world would be racked by famine, disease, and piles of waste. Insects are part of the complicated ecological jigsaw puzzle, and we disrupt it at our peril. In the 1940s and 1950s, a new insecticide called DDT was widely used. By killing mosquitoes and controlling malaria, it saved millions of lives. But DDT got into the food chain, killing birds and animals that eat insects. Its use is now tightly controlled and safer. More ecologically aware methods are used to keep insect populations balanced. We don't want too many insects, but we can't live without them.